As a college student, Marsha Johnson remembered a family trip when she was five years old and the car had a flat tire. Johnson's father headed out on foot to get it repaired. It was during a drought in California in the Central Valley. It was very hot. My sister was very uncomfortable. Uh, finally, she took a couple of pop bottles and walked up the road to the farmhouse to ask for water. And the woman in the farmhouse eyed her in and filled these pop bottles that she had with water. And then my sister came back and we drank the water. And I remember feeling very guilty that we didn't save any from my father. It was so vivid and it was so, it was emotional. The problem is most of it never happened. Her family explained there'd been no farmhouse, no woman, and no water. The revelation left Johnson wondering, how was this possible? First, there's nothing wrong with Johnson's memory. She's now Sterling Professor Emerita of Psychology at Yale and one of the leading memory researchers in the world. When it comes to her flat tire memory, she's just like the rest of us. We all have false memories, yes. It's one of the many fascinating mysteries she's explored in more than 40 years of research at the State University of New York at Stony Brook, Princeton, and Yale. Johnson assembled a theory of memory that reimagines traditional thinking and forever deepened our understanding of what it means to remember. In the 1970s, ideas about memory emphasized storing and retrieving the information derived from what we perceive. Most research focused on the number of words, pictures, or ideas that people remembered. But Johnson recognized that remembering information alone did not ensure accuracy. Identifying where the memory came from was important, since memories don't typically come with a source label. So the question becomes, how is it uh, that we aren't just totally confused all the time, right? How do we tell the products of our perception from the products of our imagination? The answer was a foundational idea called source monitoring. Put simply, when information comes to mind, unconscious processes evaluate its features. For example, memories from what we perceive typically have more vivid details than memories from imagination. So you'd usually be correct to think a vivid memory was something you perceived, but sometimes, if a memory from imagination is just as vivid, those unconscious processes can label the memory as an event that happened in real life. And that's exactly what happened with Johnson's flat tire memory. The idea that we can confuse the sources of our memories was brand new, and decades of rigorous lab testing shed light on fascinating implications, like this one. If you think about something in another person's voice, you're later more likely to claim that they said what you only thought. In other words, memory of another person's voice is one of the features used to distinguish what you heard from your own thoughts. If a memory of an idea doesn't include the speaker's voice, you might accidentally plagiarize it, thinking their idea is your own. Johnson's research offers a path for understanding changes in cognition as we age, as well as hallucinations, confabulations, and delusions. And law enforcement experts frequently cite Johnson's research in cases relying on the credibility of eyewitness testimony. Her trailblazing work is full of intriguing lessons about our relationship with memory and profoundly deepens our understanding of human cognition. After decades of rigorous research in the lab, Johnson has one piece of advice for all of us. Write it down. <laughs> That's the memory expert's answer.